Hi, when I found out about the logic auto sample function, I wondered whether I could use the functionality from that to, as a time saving thing and to speed up the process of sampling a synthesizer into Ableton. Um, so I've been th having a little think about it and I think I can make it work. Let's find out how it works. So the first thing to say, uh, this is the sound I'm gonna sample on my Moog. Now on this Moog, I don't really have polyphony. It's mostly a monophonic sound. It's technically a paraphonic synth, but to all intents and purposes, this sound is monophonic. If I wanna play this polyphonically, then I'm gonna to have to sample it in to some software and play it on a sampler. Um, so that's the first reason for doing this. Second reason is, well, I might not wanna take this Moog out to a live set with me, but I want to be able to play that sound, or it could be that I've borrowed a synth from a friend and I wanna sample a certain bank of sounds. Um, so there's lots of reasons for doing this. Um, so let's have a little look at how it works. So this is the Logic Create New Project window. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and create, to choose to create an empty project here. Um, and now Logic will give me uh, the choice of what kind of track I want to add into this project as a, as a starting point. I'm going to use the external MIDI option when it pops up uh, and there'll be a certain tick box, so external MIDI here. And I also need to tick this box, use external instrument plugin. Effectively, what that's saying is use the hardware as a plugin. So what that means is we need to get MIDI to it and we need to get audio back into Logic as well. Now the MIDI destination is shown here. Um, here's my Moog and it's actually Moog uh, channel 10 that this Moog is uh, set up to respond to. Um, and the audio is coming in to input three on my Fireface, on my sound card, uh, directly from the output on, on the synth. So this should work. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that. Um, now that's all set up fine. That looks fine, so I can go ahead and close this window. The other thing I need to do is I need to set up as an audio effect on that channel, the auto sampler plugin. Now here, because I've set up everything, um, it should allow me to play the synth. Uh, first of all, I'm just gonna turn the, the level down in Logic. Uh, it should let me play the synth. Okay, great. Uh, now, I've got to think about what do I want out of this sampling? Well, I really want to be able to use this sound as a pad. So, lo using low sounds like this, not really needed. I don't need that octave, so I'm going to remove that octave there. You can either do this by dragging the sample note range, uh, or you can uh, change the start note here uh, and the end note here if you want to. Um, so, starting here, yeah, that's good. I think I'll keep those octaves in there. So I think I'm gonna keep all that. At the moment, the uh, sample every, so the blue notes here, uh, are showing me where the uh, auto sampler is going to sample um, this, this synth. Um, so as I change this, you'll see increasing amounts of blue notes. So this is every three semitones, every two or every one. Actually, I want a very detailed capture of this particular sound. So I'm gonna say every one semitone. Uh, the amount of sustain, so this is how long is this note held for. Now let me just check this. So the sound goes into a loop after about five seconds. So I think I'm gonna just drop that down to six seconds to save a little bit of hard disk space. And if I wanna give this sound to somebody else, it means that it's not quite so bulky, um, the amount of uh, uh, audio files that are associated with this particular sound. Velocity layers, I'm not too worried about. I'm happy for it to have one velocity layer. If I want velocity, I can use that in, I can create that in the sampler. So once I get this into Ableton, Velocity response, I'm not bothered about that. Um, auto loop, this is to do with the when the, uh, the sample comes in um, and it automatically maps it into the EXS24, which is the, or the, the, in fact, what the new version of the EXS24, which is sampler within Logic. Um, so I'm not too bothered about that either. Um, now, the one thing I do need to do, which is quite interesting, because this is quite not too common actually in, uh, in Logic, is being able to adjust the input gain without having 
having to change the sound card setting. So, uh, Apple's recommendation is that it's quite close to zero without clipping. Um, so I would say that this, this fulfills that criteria. Um, Neg 10 dB, full scale, looks okay to me. Um, and I don't think that's gonna change too much. No, that's fine. So once I'm happy with how this is set up, I can click sample. It gives me an option of what to call the EXS file, so the sampler file. So I'm gonna call it Moog sub 37. And the uh, preset name is, the preset is based on something called strength. So may as well call it that. It remind me in the future if I wanna revisit this sound on the, on the synth itself. And then I can click start and I can go and make a cup of tea. Okay, so here we are just a few minutes later and the process is finished. Uh, so that's uh, all good, happy days. I got my cup of tea um, and I'm happy. So let's have a little look. Uh, we'll close this window. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new instrument channel and I'm gonna load up the sampler, the XS24, or what it was the XS24 the new sampler and here within my factory uh, settings I've now got the Moog Sub 37 string and load that up and I can now play it polyphonically. How fantastic. So yeah, really great uh, process. Um, really, really simple and really easy. Uh, so now how do we get that into Ableton? So uh, I've moved across to Ableton. I've got a MIDI channel with a sampler inserted on that. Um, if I expand the zones, uh, I can see that there's no samples in here. So there's, there's, this is not gonna play anything. It's a brand new sampler. And what I wanna do is populate these zones with the samples that Logic in the auto sampler created. First thing I need to do is find them. So if I use Spotlight and search for Moog Sub 37, uh, it should bring up the folder that I created. Now this folder is somewhere buried in my username um, and I always find this a bit risky because if I reformat or reinstall the OS X, there's a chance that I could lose these samples if I leave them where they are. As far as Logic's concerned, I don't really mind having a duplicate of them because I might at some point want to play them in Logic. So I'll probably leave them here, but I'm going to copy them to my instruments uh, directory, which I have an instruments drive. I'm going to drag it onto instruments here and I have an auto sampled synths folder. So um, I'm gonna copy that across to there. And I'm gonna use that as my location. This instruments drive gets backed up all the time. And so this is a, a, a solid place for me to be able to use um, and come back a, time and again to these sounds and these samples. So I'm gonna use this um, and I'm gonna open up this f file actually um, and organize these samples by date modified. By doing this, I know that the older file is the first one that auto sampler sampled, so it will be the lowest note, and the newest one will be the highest note. So if I multi-select all of these, and I drag them onto the sampler here, into the zone category, now a sampler in Ableton has automatically mapped these individual notes to individual zones and it's also um, in a in ascending way it's assigned a root note to those different samples. 
basically this is done. The only thing that we need to do now is to uh, find that folder. So I also have in my places, I have that auto sampled folder that I created in my instruments drive. And I just want to drag this um, as a starting point onto here and create this sub 37 string. Um, I'm going to just have a little tidy up here and put that into the root folder there and remove that. Yeah. Um, so now I know that always within that auto sampled folder, I have my uh, string sound um, or my string sample uh, sampler uh, instrument. Um, but, and then within that same folder are all of the AIF files that are associated with that. Uh, that's categorizing that currently. We know that that's true. If we look at the finder um, and we can just verify that, that all of those are in there along with their associated uh, analysis files that um, Ableton's created uh, and the instrument is there too. Um, so the last thing to do is just to play it. <laughs> There we go, I have a polyphonic version of the Moog sound ready to play uh, and ready to use in my productions in Ableton. Winner. So yeah, hopefully that's been useful to you. Um, yeah, it's, it's really kind of a, a time saver for me and I'm really happy that it's working out in this way. Uh, as always, uh, any questions, put them in the comments and don't forget to check the description for more information about my Patreon and my website mailing list and that kind of thing. If you want to get in touch, get in touch. If you want to sign up, sign up and I'll see you next time. Big up. Peace. <laughs>